الحمد لله وكفى السلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما ينتق عن الهواء إن هو إلا وحي يوها وحان ربك رب العزيز عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وبارك وسلم So we did Hadith number 48 and then we skipped on to Hadith number 50 last time. Hadith number 49. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما يزال البلاء بالمؤمن والمؤمنة في نفسه وولده وماله حتى يلقى الله تعالى وما عليه خطيئة This hadith is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه He says that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said ما يزال البلاء بالمؤمن والمؤمنة في نفسه وولده وماله that حتى يلقى الله تعالى وما عليه خطيئة that on believer believing men and women on the calamities will keep coming on their life on their children and on their wealth until they will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state that they will, they will not have any sins. So this is something that we have been talking about for the past two, three weeks in Babu Sadr. That all the difficulties, the calamities that come on people are to remove their sins. Irrespective of if that is a punishment of it or if that is a test. They remove sins. Even if that is a punishment, still it removes sins. And if it's test, and it still removes sins. If the sins are removed, and it, then it also becomes a source of the raising of the darajat, the raising of the status of the people. So we need to be patient in every sin, every calamity that we may get. And that calamity, as Prophet ﷺ is saying here, can be on people's lives, can be on people's wealth, or can be in people's children. So it can be in anything. What sort of calamities come on people's lives? The calamities that come on people's lives are, for example, they may get sick. Many people who are sick, some sort of sickness. So that is a calamity on people's lives. Or people may pass away. Like, but that passing away would be something who is around. If that is for their own, on their own selves, that is normally sickness. Any sort of sickness. And that sickness can be a physical sickness or that can also be a spiritual sickness. That's another thing. Some people have spiritual sicknesses. For example, some people they're not able to think properly. Think properly in a sense that they have a lot of doubts. Like people have doubts about things. So, say if they have prayer three rakas or four rakas, if they have just this issue within themselves that, you know, that, that they don't know really. Every time they pray, they always forget that how, how much do they have to pray. It's a very, very difficult thing. It's not an easy thing to tackle. Very difficult thing. SubhanAllah, somebody came to me the other day and the person said that, you know, she always had doubt that if she has kept her wudu or not. 
And as soon as, soon as she started her prayers, she would have this feeling as if she has broken her wudu. And subhanAllah, you know, she would break her, and she would have thought that she has, her prayer is broken. She would go redo her wudu, come back, again start her prayers. Still, again, will think as if, as if she has broken her wudu. Will leave the prayer, go back, make wudu, come back. From the start of the prayer time to the end of the prayer time, that's all what she would be doing. Just imagine the state that she is in. Sharia has, of course, told us the, the, the solution to that. I mean, mashallah, that's why she came and asked. But Sharia has told us, but people who have these sort of issues, that's a very difficult thing to handle. Somebody called me a, a couple of years ago, and he said that I always think that whatever I'm saying is wrong. He said that I always think that as if I'm saying the words of kufr. And he's always repeating his kalima. All the time. That's all what he was doing. Every possibly every day, every other day, he was thinking as if he has said uh, words of kufr. And he was going and he was going to muftis, talking to them, asking them, you know, oh, possibly I've done that. You know, possibly my nikah has been broken. And subhanallah, he's gone and oh, actually redid re- 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 his nikah. And it was so like it's in such a terrible state. And I, I felt for him. SubhanAllah. So people have all of these sorts of issues. They are spiritual issues. But Sharia has of course given the solution to all of that as well. Sharia has not left people. But I mean that, but the thing is that people have to go to the right places in order to get their solutions. Just like when you have a medical issue, you're sick, you're physically sick. Then you need to go to doctors to get your prescriptions, to get your medicine get whatever they recommend and take it and you know Allah Ta'ala has put cure in that cure comes from Allah it doesn't come from people but you know this is sunnah of Allah you go to your doctor you ask him you tell him your issue then he tells you uh, what what you have to take and you take it and Allah Ta'ala if he has decided then he's put cure in that medicine for that person just like there are spiritual issues so there are spiritual sicknesses and right? some people have you know, doubts about other things. His doubt is a big issue. Baswasas and doubts is one of the biggest spiritual issues. And that does not let people sit in, 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 a, in a sound state. Very, very difficult thing. Extremely difficult. I know that. I know that. I've experienced it. I've, I've, I know people. But subhanAllah, you know, but, there, but what I'm trying to say is that people are tested. Some people are very, mashallah, they're living a normal life. But other people have these issues. Either they're physically sick. Some people have, you know, allergies. One last, the other day, I was I met with a like I know somebody. So he just he has these allergies issues. Just sitting quite normally, and suddenly he gets allergic to something. He doesn't even know what does he get allergic with. And you know, like all his body gets starts getting swollen, and subhanallah, you know, the lips will get fat and it's swollen, and you know. The face will not be presentable anymore. So you can't even sit with people. Just imagine. And there are people who are normal. There are other people who have other sorts of issues. Some people get, you know, some very big diseases like cancer. You know, subhanAllah, they go through all of that stages of chemotherapy and stuff like that. These are all tests or punishments. It depends. And we have already spoken about it. Then when are these punishments and when are, when are these tests? But there are punishments and tests. But they all are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to take proper measures in order to, you know, to, to tackle those. But if people have any of these, that is a very difficult state. That's not a normal state. And if it's not a normal state, you know, then of course people can't even live their life properly because either, you know, indeed any of these things, either people are not able to concentrate on things that they're supposed to concentrate on. For example, you're supposed to you know, just serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what our job is. Our job is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if people are not in normal state, in any of these normal states, they be it physical or spiritual, then people cannot serve the deen of Allah in a normal way. Or if people are, for example, uh, in, in, in spiritual states, like say these are, for example, the doubts, right? They can't even, can't, I mean, the, the example that I gave of that, that sister, you know, she couldn't do anything. Of course, she couldn't do anything because that's all what she was doing. People waste time. People waste a lot of time. And that's what shaitan is doing. Actually, spiritual, sometimes spiritual 
or from shaitan and sometimes all nafsani things. But people are not able to spend their time properly. Some people have, as I said, some people have, have uh, this, this issue like, like doubts about wudu, right? They're just making wudu all the time. They're praying all the time. Some people have other issues. But these all issues are issues. They're genuine issues. And they must be, like the people, people who have it, they must go to the doctors, be it physical doctors, be it spiritual doctors, and they should get them cured. But at the very same time, until they're not cured, people have to be patient. People have to be patient, but that's, that does not mean that people sit on that. You know, this is the right of the body that people get cured for that. If people have, say for example, any sort of sickness, our Mashaikh have said this is the right of the body that people go to the doctor and get it cured. And similarly, if people have spiritual issues, it is the right of, of it is, we, we must go to the spiritual doctors and get it cured. And then, I mean, of course, all what they will do is they'll just give you a prescription. You take that prescription and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who actually gives the cure. But we must take those steps. But until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not decided to give us the cure, then that's a very difficult state to be in. You must remain patient. And what happens as a result that people are in that difficult state of their life, you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually removing their sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually removing their sins. If it's not a punishment, even if it's a punishment, then still they remove, Allah ta'ala is removing their sins. But in any way, we have to be very, very, uh, you know, scared. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness as well at the very same time. Along with getting the cure, we need to make sure that we are doing a lot of istighfar. We are doing a lot of istighfar. And take the proper steps. And also then he says, وَوَلَدِهِ مَا يَزَالُ الْبَلَاءُ بِالْمُؤْمِنِ وَالْمُؤْمِنَةِ فِي نَفْسِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ SubhanAllah, this is one of the biggest tests that people can get. It is easy for people to take things on their own selves, but it's extremely difficult for people to take anything on their, on their children. Be it their sickness, be it their death, be it anything. If they are, say for example, they go to school and somebody hits them and they comes back crying, they come back crying, you know, it's a very difficult thing to take on, right? Oh, somebody is sick, my child. So, anything that happens on children, especially sickness or their death, this is a big test. And subhanAllah, the, if people are patient in that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also, put, has also promised a lot of reward. It comes in another hadith near meanings. I don't know if we'll cover that or not. But if somebody's small child passes away, and people are patient over that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him a house in paradise. SubhanAllah. There's a story about the Malik bin Dinar, rahmatullah alayhi. It's a true story. So the Malik bin Dinar, rahmatullah alayhi, he was, initially he was like, uh, he used to sin. And he had a small little daughter who passed away at a very young age like two, three, four, like very young age. And he used to love his daughter a lot. SubhanAllah, you know, one night he slept, he saw a dream. He saw a dream that it is a day of judgment. And everybody is in very chaotic state. And suddenly what he sees, that there is a big snake, huge snake, that is after him, who is running, who is coming after him to, to bite him. So he got scared, and he started running, and run, so he started running to run away from the from the snake. And the snake kept coming after him, kept coming after him, until what happened that he saw the fire in front of him. So when he saw the fire in front of him, and snake at the back, so he was like extremely worried. What will I do? What should I do? Where will I go? If I keep running, I'll fall into the fire. If I stop, the snake will come and bite me. So suddenly he saw a weak old man, an old man, but extremely weak. He went to him, ran to him, please help me, please help me. He said, you know what, I can't help you, I'm a very weak old man. But you know, I, but he pointed toward a place, he said, you know, go run in that direction. So he started running in that direction. So when he ran in that direction, eventually what, and the snake was after him. Suddenly what he saw is that there was a huge palace. And the huge palace and there was, there were windows, a lot of rooms and a lot of windows. And there were small little children peeping out, peeking out of the window. 
So when he reached there, suddenly what he sees is that his daughter who had passed away in a very young age, she was also peeking from one of the windows. So as soon as she saw her father, you know, in such a terrible state of snake is after him, she came down and she did something, she threw something on the snake and the snake ran away. And she, you know, so the, the Sina Malik bin Dinar was extremely happy, Rahmatullah alayhi, he took the, her, his daughter, put uh, her on his lap, started like loving her, and she said, you know, that Alam Amanu that hasn't the time come upon the believers that hearts would melt in the zikr of Allah. So as soon as he heard that's what her his daughter was saying, he got up from his sleep and he was like in a shaking. He was he was really shaking like very hard and he went to somebody's a person, a pious person, a sheikh, and he went and he asked him, you know, this is what I saw. He said, you know what? This is what your state is. This is what your state is like. You that snake was your sins. All these sins who are forcing you, pushing you towards the fire. And that weak old man that you saw were your small little good deeds that you have done. But these good deeds were not enough to save you. But what actually saved you was that daughter that you loved very much and who passed away when you were very young, when she was very young. And she was the one who actually became the source of your, of your uh, savior. But the thing is, he also reminded you, you know what? Let's get up. You know, why hasn't your heart changed? that, you know, it should move with the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're all running towards that day. So get up. So when he, this became the source of his tawbah. So he actually did tawbah from all the sins that he did. And subhanAllah went and spent the company in his shaykh and became a wali of Allah himself. In the Malik bin Dina. So all of the, this, this test that we, whoever Allah ta'ala tests people with, with like with the passing away of their small little children, it's a huge test. But if people are patient on that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stored a lot of reward for those people. And the third thing that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned is wamalihi and their wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people with wealth as well. Subhanallah, you know, some people are doing business some suddenly and everything is going fine and, you know, suddenly they lose something. The container that had to come, you know, it gets the ship gets drowned in the in, in the sea. Oh, they, I mean, there's millions of there are millions of dollars, and suddenly they lose it. Subhanallah, you know, there's a warehouse, you know, there's lots of millions of dollars, millions of dirhams uh, inventory in there, and you know, suddenly one night it gets fired. You know, it's not in our control. It's from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But what Allah Taala is doing is testing people. It's just testing people. Suddenly something happens and you know, you were supposed to get half a million dirhams and you lose it overnight. I mean, it's, you know, your, your partner, he just runs away. Something happens. Well, you know, I was talking to, uh, to, I mean, I know a few people, a couple of families here who were in South Africa and they're huge, they're like, like literally possibly billions of dollars business. And you know, something, there was a, 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 a Something went wrong, some political situation went wrong in that country, in one of the southern African countries, and they had to run overnight. They just came over here. SubhanAllah. You know, this left everything over there. And they're really, really trying hard to go back, but there's an issue. SubhanAllah. You know, they're like billionaires, possibly. And they've just lost everything. And they're now really struggling. It happens. Everything happens. I know a person personally. Personally, I know a person a big industri industrialist, you know, a millionaire. And subhanAllah, I have seen him with my own eyes from, like, as they say, like, I'm from riches to rags, I've seen it with my own eyes. I lost everything. SubhanAllah. And this is the reality of life. That is the reason that we have to be, we need to know that it is all from Allah. These are the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once we do realize that these are the blessings from Allah, then we will do shukr. We will be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings. We will not have any sort of arrogance in our heart. And when we will not have any sort of arrogance in our heart, we will do shukar and also spend all the money that Allah ta'ala has given us. We will spend a portion of that in the cause of Allah. Then when shukar increases, spending increases, 
All of that increases, that Allah Ta'ala will save that. But if people are arrogant or sit on their wealth and they are seeing their bank balance every day, you know, to yesterday it was 10,000, today it becomes 15, then a time will come that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala may take it away. Or that's a punishment, but then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala may test some people as well to check what's in the heart. Are people actually getting a heartache when Allah Ta'ala takes it away? Or people are actually, they're content, still content, hoping with Allah, from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala that if it is written for me, it will come. If it's not written, it's never going to come in any way. So these are all tests. These are all tests. So if Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala tests us with our life, with our children, or with our wealth, then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that if it, ha- it is a test, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will purify their hearts. Will purify their hearts. Hatta yanqa Allah ta'ala wa ma alayhi khati'atun Until they will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will have no sin on them. Allah Akbar. But having said that, I've already said that in previous sessions, that we must ask for afiyat. We must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection, for peace, for, for, for ni'mas, for His blessings. Because indeed we are extremely weak people. We should never ask for any test. We should never ever ask for any test. We cannot take tests. We are very weak people. We are, you know, subhanAllah, somebody was comparing, you know, why did people do that when, you know, when Prophet Sallallahu did that. I said, subhanAllah, you know, we cannot compare ourselves with the Prophet Sallallahu We can follow a few of his sunnahs, but we cannot follow all of his sunnahs. You know, try living in a, in, in a small little studio apartment on, 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 on mats, you know, and just, uh, just all of what he was doing, don't eat for three days, let's see how can you survive. I told you that story, you know, Abdul Qadir Jinani, rahmatullah alayhi, he had his, like, his uh, a spiritual training center, his, uh, his madrasa. And he once visited that place and he saw that the people who would come and spend time there to develop themselves, they were, they were fed like twice a day. They were fed meat. And he said, what's happening here? He said, you know what, they're here to develop themselves and they're feeding their nafs. They're eating meat twice a day. This is, you know, we, we, we will not do that. So he asked the people who were organ, the, the organizers of that place. He said, from today now onwards, you will, you will only have to feed them once. And no meat. And and this person, you know, like a month later or maybe a few, a couple of weeks later, he wrote a letter. You know, said everybody is sick there. So they came to do zikr, to do worship, to develop themselves. You know, they were doing all of that. But you know, when we we start giving them once a day and no meat, you know, everybody once one after another, everybody felt sick. And then he realized. He said, Oh, what did I do? He said I should not have done that. We are not, the, we are not Sahaba. You know, we are physically weak and we are spiritually weak. That's why my Sheikh, he says that, you know, today, all those mujahidas of, you know, less eating, less drinking, less uh, sleep, he said, these mujahidas are not for me and you. Our mujahida is sins. We must leave every single sin. That's our mujahida. That was not their mujahida as such. Today we just step out of the masjid and there are women walking down the street without their clothes on. That's our mujahida for today. He said, eat whatever you want to eat. Eat halal though. Be careful, eat halal, but eat whatever you like. Eat, drink halal, but drink whatever you like. You want, if you think that your body needs eight hours of sleep, sleep for eight hours, but don't sin. The biggest thing is don't sin. Sin is our biggest mujahid of this day and age. So our spirituality, our darajat with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets increased by taking in halal and by acting halal. In other words, make sure that we don't sin at all. Any sin, it breaks that connection with Allah. Our mujahid is that. And we must struggle with that, with sins. We must make sure that we don't sin. Sin of the eyes, of the ears, of the, of the tongue, of the, of the genitals. All we must need every single sin. This is what we need to do. This is what our mujahidah is. This is what we should we should all be very careful about. So we must. There are things that we can we should compare the way that we are like. We must be like the Prophet ﷺ, the way we look like. But as far as the things as to what we have to do, 
We cannot do all of those things. So that's why there are mashayikh. That is why people must take spiritual guides. A mashayikh, a teacher in their spirituality. They will tell you, you know, what to do in, in, your, in, your, in your circumstances. Whatever issue you have, we must not try to start solving issues by our own selves because we will only be very limited in our intellect. And we don't understand deen. In some things we exaggerate. And in other things we are deficient. We don't know what is the proper thing to do. This is the reason why, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِينَ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. Allah ta'ala does, it's a sunnah of Allah. Allah ta'ala wants that we peak, we ask people, act on it as it's, it's told. And also, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَكُونُوا مَعَ صَادِكِينَ Oh people, you know, have, have taqwa of Allah. How can have you, how will you have developed taqwa of Allah? How will you be able to leave your sins? By kunu ma'asadikin, by being being with the righteous people, by taking a shaykh in your life, by taking a guide. So this is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we need to do. Right? So this is something that, so we must not ask for any sort of calamity. We must not ask for any sort of test. We should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afir. We must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection. You must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ease. You must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessings, for increases blessings. You must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects our blessings. You must ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for good of this dunya and the hereafter. This is what we all should do. But if a test comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we must be patient. Be it in our nas or be in our you know, awlad or be it in our man. This is what we must do. And when it da- it happens and we are patient, then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, حَتَّى يَلْقَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمَا عَلَيْهِ خَطِيئَةٌ And until they will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will have no sin on them on the day of it. Next hadith, 50 we did, 51. This is narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. On Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqala innaha satakunu ba'di atharatun wa amurun tunkirunaha qalu ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fama ta'muruna qala tu'addun al-haqqa al-ladhi alaykum wa tas'aluna allaha al-ladhi lakum this, this hadith is both in Sahih of uh, Imam Bukhari Rahmatullah and Imam Muslim Rahmatullah Ali. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, so which is narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Masood, that soon after me, people will prefer one over another. And you will, and there will be matters, there will be affairs that you will dislike. So Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, they asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what, what do you say about us? What should we do in that time? So he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the rights that you have on you, you should continue uh, giving that. And you should keep asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your rights. Basically, what Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, is talking about here is that people will come and will be over you. Who will sort of drive you. Like maybe the people who, who rule. Or maybe people who... Like say if you're at our workplaces who are over and above, who are above us. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that after me there will come a time that they will prefer some over the others. SubhanAllah, this could not even have, they could not even think about it. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. And they were so much trained by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they would ne- never even think about that there, it is even a possibility that somebody will be given preference over the others. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. That, you know, no, the, 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 the uh, what is that? 
وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم that I have made you in, in tribes and groups so that you know each other but nobody is better than other everybody is the same عند الله near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everybody is the same but the thing that actually gives people preference is what? taqwa leaving of the sins if people leave sins they are more closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If people don't leave sins, then they have lower degree. That's the only thing that actually differentiates people. But black, white, you know, uh, European, Asian, it does not matter. An Arab, a non-Arab, does not matter. So everybody is the same in, in, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And nobody was even, could even have thought that people will prefer some over the others. Nobody. SubhanAllah, Sayyidina Bilal with Allah Ta'ala Anu was an Ethiopian slave. He was a slave. He wasn't even from a very you know, noble, noble in the sense that very uh, high lineage. He was a slave. He was an Ethiopian. Wasn't a very handsome looking man outwardly. Right? But SubhanAllah, this Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him that status that nobody could even have thought about. He was the Mu'azzin of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the one, you know, when everybody when at the time of the Fatah of Makkah, at the time of the conquest of Makkah, when, when they had to uh, break all the idols from the Kaaba, and all those giant Sahabas were with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who did Prophet Sallallahu choose to, to remove the idols? Sinna Bilal. And then he asked him to climb the Kaaba, go on the top, on the roof of the Kaaba and give Azan, Allah Akbar. SubhanAllah. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on Mi'raj and he heard the footsteps of somebody in paradise. And he asked him the Jibreel alayhi salam, who is this? And he said, Bilal, this is what our status is with Allah, how our status becomes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not with our wealth, not with our color, not with our nationality, not with anything, but taqwa. And nobody could even think that, you know, if I have a person A and person B, I would prefer one over the other because, you know, he's white or he's black or he's Arab or he's non-Arab, nothing. And when Prophet ﷺ said that after me you will see this, that there will people who come and rule you and they will they will prefer some of the others and subhanAllah, this was a shock for the Sahaba and said that well, well, and, and you will see affairs tunkirunaha and then you will dislike those. You will dislike those affairs. Of course when some people are preferred over the others, that's not very good. That's not very pleasing. Actually actually you feel as if your rights have been taken away. Right? For example, you to, there, there's a queue to, to get something, for example. And somebody knows, say for example, there's a, just say, say, this is, there's a shop, there's a shop, right? And somebody knows the owner of the shop, and he comes and takes somebody from the middle of the queue and takes him right in the front. Just imagine all of these people who are standing in front of him, they would feel as, as if their right has been taken away. It's just an example. And it happens. Somebody was asking me the other day, that is okay to give bribe if you know if your if your thing that is justifiable is is somebody is stopping it just because they want to take bribe and it's a very valid thing that is your right has been taken here it is your right to get that thing but some people somehow who are sitting out there they're just not giving you your rights it is something that's very displeasing of course right we all possibly have gone through the, one of these things. And, but this was a shock for the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين Ya Rasulullah, how can that happen? What, what do you think? Uh, what, what do you order? What should we do? Ya Rasulullah, for what do you order us for in that state? So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that you know, that all the rights that you have on you, that you have to give to people, make sure that you don't take those rights away. Number one, you know, the, the, the return of zulm is not zulm. Remember that. The return of zulm is not a zulm. The return of oppression is not an oppression. Never. This is not our deen. We must not, if somebody is oppressing us, we must not oppress that other person. So I tell you one thing. When somebody does, oppresses you, he is a zalim, you oppress that person, it is a possibility that you will become zalim and he will become muslim. You will become oppressor and he will be oppressed. This is a possibility. And you have, first of all, you will be a sinner. And number two, what will happen is that you've actually, there was the status that you had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, have, you, will, you will lose that status. 
A person who is oppressed, if he raises his hands and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no barrier between the dua of this person and the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no barrier. It goes directly to Allah, to the arsh of Allah. Directly, without any barrier. But when people become zalim and the other becomes mazloom, then you are actually stopping your du'as. So there is, the, we must not oppress if we are oppressed. Whatever rights we, we have to give, we must continue giving those rights. If somebody has, has come and for example does something, you know, we must continue doing what we are supposed to do. Because our job, is, our affairs are with Allah. This is something that we always forget. Our status, what is our, what, what are we, who are we? We are just Abdullah, we are Ibadullah, we are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We forget that. We forget that we are living in this world, a very temporary life. We are not here to live forever. And we are going in our graves and we are going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be judged. We forget that. We always forget that. That's why we do whatever we do. When we shout at people, scream at people, you know, snatch things away from people, oppress people, you know, all the ikhlaq that we show to people, don't talk to people in a proper way, we, you know, treat people as if they're animals, etc. This is only when, when we forget who are we, what's our reality. So, when we are oppressed, we must continue thinking and continue realizing that we all are Ibadullah. And we are all living a very temporary short life and we are all going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean that we are dealing with Allah, we are not dealing with, the, we are dealing with makhluk, with the creation, but our actual, you know, all our affairs are with Allah. So we must take that as an opportunity to actually develop or strengthen that, that, that bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what we should do at that time. We forget that. And we lose an opportunity right there and then. So this is what Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that once if people oppress you, if people are in authority and they they prefer some over the others, and your right is taken away, then you must keep giving rights to the people who you are supposed to give rights to. You must because you are dealing with Allah. You are dealing with Allah subhanahu wa taala. Your affairs are with Allah subhanahu wa taala, and then. At the very same time, so in other words, be patient. Be patient. If, if somebody is shouting, don't shout back. Right? Be patient. Because your akhlaq is your akhlaq, his akhlaq is his akhlaq. Right? So if he is losing his akhlaq, his character, you must not lose your character. So because you are dealing with Allah. So you, you're, you are supposed to be quiet. You are supposed to be well behaved. You are supposed to be well mannered. You are supposed to be honest. You are supposed to give your rights to people. You must continue giving your rights. You must keep respecting people for the sake of Allah. And then have hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for reward because you are patient. But at the very same time, what you should do? وَتَسْأَلُونَ اللَّهَ أَلَّذِي لَكُمْ You should continue also asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your rights. It doesn't mean that you should, you know, just keep quiet. You, you just like, just, just, just take, keep, continue taking what you're taking. No. You should, but you should not snatch it from people who are taking your rights away. Ask Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, you know, I'm being oppressed here. And you know, Ya Allah, you know everything. I beg you that you please interfere in this matter. And Ya Allah, you please fix this issue for me. You don't snatch it. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. You continue giving your rights and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fix that issue. That is the approach of a believer, always. Our problem is that subhanAllah, somebody does bad to us and we do bad to that person. This is a common issue. And this is not what we are supposed to do. What's the difference? What is the difference then? If somebody does bad to us and we do bad to them, that's what happens, you know, somebody, there are two tribes, one kills this, per, the person from this person, and as a revenge, as a, as a result, he kills the, the person from the other tribe. What's the difference? That means both are acting like animals. There's no humanity there. There's no belief there. there in, in, in other words, what people are saying is that we are in charge of our own selves. We are in control of our affairs our own, by our own selves. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, okay, you go take care of your affairs then. It's nothing to do with me. 
right? And if Allah Ta'ala, he, Allah Ta'ala gets out of the picture, then how can we achieve anything in our lives? Not, we can never achieve anything in our lives, be it anything. Be it our job, be it our business, be it our you know, affairs with our relatives, with our friends, with our employers, with our employees, and you just, just name it. If we start dealing ourselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and his protection moves out, then we can never be able to achieve what we want. Never. So we must, our, the response of a believer is that he must be patient and that he should continue doing what he should be doing. If somebody's cutting, you know, the traffic, we must not start competing and start cutting the traffic as well. We must be patient. Let him do what he's doing. We should keep give, giving rights to other people that are in the queue, right? And that, and then, but also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not just sit there and, you know, just, just keep getting oppressed all our lives, no. We are also supposed to get some rights, but ask Allah. And if Allah ta'ala has decided that He is going to give our rights, inshallah, we will get our rights. If Allah ta'ala has stored those rights in the hereafter, then He will and inshallah ta'ala will get our reward in, our, in, in the year after and that's the best but anyway we, we, we ask as I said we ask for the uh, for the blessings in this dunya and also in the year after as well next it is 52 وعن أبي يحيى أسيد ابن خدير رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رجلا من الأنصار قال يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا تستعملني كما استعملت فلانا فقال إنكم ستلقون بعدي أسرة فاصبروا حتى تلقوني على الحوض متفق عليه سبحان الله This, is, this hadith is narrated by Sayyidina Abu Yahya, Sayyidina Usaid ibn Hudayr, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that one of the people from Ansar, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, make me amil. Like you have made such and such person amil. Amil means actually uh, a person who does something, he's a person of authority. So make me also give me that authority that has the, the way that you have given that person authority. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that after me you will see that people will be biased then you must be patient until you will meet me at the pond of Kawthar. SubhanAllah. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is telling a person an Ansari Sahabi who has come to him and said Ya, ya Rasulullah also give me that position of authority as you have given the other person the, the position of authority. So he is asking for it. First of all what uh, is it something that should be done or should not be done? The question. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that one must not ask for a position of authority. No. In fact, he said that when people are not, and they do not want a position of authority, and they are forced to take that position of authority, then angels, they also, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has appointed angels who come and help that person. And when people ask for a position of authority, and then they are given that position of authority that those angels that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has normally appointed to help people in that in his affairs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes those angels away. So people must not ask for position of authority. In fact, they actually are disqualifying themselves by asking for the position of authority. But there are a few exceptions. And those exceptions are that when people think that there is nobody, there is not a single honest man, for example, in this, 
and, and this place who can be made a person of authority and if any of these people may come and they become the position of authority then they will oppress then in those circumstances it is allowed to actually ask for it as well but with that intention just like Sayyidina Yusuf salam did as well if you look into the story of Sayyidina Yusuf salam he also asked the Aziz of the Misr that you know I am a very honest man so make me in charge of the treasury but that is only those circumstances and that also means becoming the Imam of the prayers one must not ask that, you know, or step forward to become the Imam in the prayer. Never. What you are actually doing is that you are putting such a huge burden on your head. Imam is the leader of the whole prayers. In fact, it's an ikhtalaf uh, between Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i that according to Imam Abu Hanifa as based on a few ahadith, Imam is actually praying on the behalf of his muqtadis, of the people, of his followers. That's why in the Ihnaf, you know, there is no recitation in the, in the congregational prayer behind the Imam. So all the people who are following, they must just be quiet and just listen to the Imam's recitation, even if it's a loud prayer or a silent prayer. And the Imam Shafi'i, rahmatullah alayhi, he actually, you know, he's a different opinion. But anyway, Imam is actually, is taking the responsibility of the followers. And if somebody steps up and starts leading, Allah Akbar, what a burden. What a burden. That if he is not, you know, if his prayer is not uh, according to that quality that is required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none of our prayers is of that quality, but you know, I can take care of, I can take my responsibility, how can I take responsibility of the 30 people praying behind me? So that's a general rule. Unless somebody asks you, you know, will you please lead? That's fine. And now you're not actually doing it on your own self. But with certain, our ulama have said, our mashayikh have said, with a few exceptions, for example, you see that none of the people are the people of uh, Sunnah. They're none of the people, they're actually open sinners. Then it is also makruh to for a person to lead the prayer who is an open sinner. And here there are ten people, for example, you go to the masala of your workplace, and there are people who actually, you know, none of them is following sunnahs, just sitting openly. And say, Allah has given you tawfiq, that you follow at least some outward sunnah and try to hide your sins, not openly sinning. Right. Then, you know, you must step up and, you know, start, lead your prayer at that time. But there are exceptions. There are very, very few exceptions. But with, with a very heavy heart though, subhanAllah, what a responsibility that people are taking by stepping up and becoming the imam of the prayer. Right. And similarly with other tasks, for example, if people step up themselves and say, you know, make me the the the, the teacher of that particular madrasa or maybe the principal of that madrasa, what a responsibility that you're, pl- you're p- actually putting your burden on your shoulders. If somebody asks you to become a principal of that, I mean, then it's okay, but not by your own selves. So this is an, a general principle. Please keep that in mind. Because if you're given a position of authority, then Allah's help comes with that. But if you actually tr- want to take that by your own self, then you know that is... That, that help is taken, the special help is taken away, except, as I said, in a few circumstances, but that all depends on the intention, and Allah knows our intentions. Right? So this Sahabi, Radhi Allah Ta'ala, anhu, anhu, is coming and he is asking for that position of authority. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that after me you will see that there will be preference given to few people over the other. So in other words, he's giving him indirect answer. SubhanAllah, what a way to tell the Sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. What a polite and a beautiful way of telling the Sahabi. He's saying, you know, after me you will see that people will be preferred over the others. Oh, I'm the brother of Fula CEO. Right? So you, you make me CFO. Well, if you're not supposed to become a CFO, why should you be made a CFO just because you're the brother of the CEO? So he's saying that this is what you will, you will see after me. So if that person, so he said that you make me a person of authority just like you made that person of authority. The Prophet ﷺ is indirectly telling him, you know what? He was given that position of authority because he deserved that position of authority. 
It's not that anybody will come and ask for it and it'll just made, you know, may, you will be given that position of authority, you are CEO, you are CFO, just because they are your relatives or your brothers or your sisters. If they deserve it, they deserve it. But if they don't, they don't. So Prophet ﷺ is just giving him indirectly that answer. You know, after you, after me, you will see this sort of an attitude amongst people. That people will be preferred over the others. And people will, will be just given preference because of some reason. And then he's saying that when you see that, be patient. Same thing as it was uh, told in the previous hadith. But then Prophet ﷺ is saying again, one more reward on top of what he said and uh, well, there was no reward mentioned in the previous hadith. All but he was he was telling in the previous hadith that what you should do is that even if you're preferred, if you're oppressed, what you should do is that you should continue giving your uh, you should continue doing your uh, act or your job. Make sure that you give rights to people and you keep asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that your rights are given. But here, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also telling about a reward that if you're patient and you do what was told in the other hadith. Then what will happen? Then I will see you on the part of, of counsel. Allahu Akbar. You know, when you do your job, you are patient, you give your rights, you don't take away anybody's rights, you don't oppress other people, you don't anything, don't do anything bad, then, you know, I will welcome you on the part of counsel. Allahu Akbar. On that day when everybody will be thirsty, on that day, you know, when the sun will be so close and people will be Drowning in their own sweat according to the sins that they have done. Some people will be drowning and the sweat will be until their ankles. For others, the sweat will be until their knees. For others, the sweat will be until their waist. Uh, for some people, they will be just completely drowning in their sweat. It will be very hot. People will find, will really willing to, will, will be searching for shade. And there will be few lucky people as it comes in the hadith that Allah Ta'ala will give them the shade of His throne when there will be no other shade but that one shade. But people will be extremely thirsty and people will be looking for water and there will be no water. But there will be a few people that Prophet ﷺ will be given a, a, a blessing on that day, which is the Kawsa, which is the which is a river of the paradise. And Prophet ﷺ will stand on the day of judgment and he will distribute that water of paradise to a few lucky people. SubhanAllah, and that that drink will be such a drink that whoever will be drink or whoever will drink that, just one Glass or one sip from the blessed hands of the beloved of the beloved of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. People will not feel thirsty until they'll enter paradise. Allahu Akbar. And that one of the ways that people can get that is by being patient. When they are oppressed, being patient, and also ask to keep doing what they are supposed to do. And on top of that, keep asking Allah subhanahu wa taala for their rights. Allahu Akbar. Ajee. So what a reward. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that if when you see that, when you see that sort of a preference that are given to other people when you are deserving and you are patient, then you know then, فَصْبِرُ حَتَّى تَلْقَوْنِ عَلَى الْحَوْدِ Then be patient until you will see me on the pond of Kawthar. Next hadith, I'll just quickly do that hadith, inshallah, because the last last hadith of this bab is this chapter. Inshallah, we'll start with the next chapter next time. Hadith number 53. Wa'an Abi Ibrahim, Abdullahi ibn Abi Awfa, radiyallahu anhuma, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi ba'di ayami allati laqiya fiha al-uduwa in tadara. Hatta idha malat al-shamsu qama fihim, faqala, يا أيها الناس لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو واسألوا الله العافية فإذا لقيتموهم أصبروا واعلموا أن الجنة تحت ظلال السيوف ثم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم منزل الكتاب ومجري السحاب وهاجم الأحزاب اهزمهم وانصرنا عليهم متفق عليه This hadith is narrated by Sina Abdullah bin uh, bin Abi Awfa, whose kunya was Abu Ibrahim, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, once he was uh, uh, fighting with the enemy, and he was waiting for the sun to set. 
and he stood up and he said to the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'in he said oh people don't have a hope to fight with the enemy don't wish to fight with the enemy wish is a better word لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو don't wish to fight with the enemy and he said وَسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ الْعَافِيَةِ ask Allah Ta'ala for afiyat ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for protection ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for safety don't wish for wars he said don't wish for wars it's not a good thing and I always ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for afiyat for protection for safety but then he said فَإِذَا لَقِيْتُمُوهُمْ فَاسْبِرُوا if there is a war then be patient وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ تَحْفَ ظِلَالِ السُّيُوفِ Know that the paradise is under the shadow of the, of the swords. ثُمَّ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said اللهم منزل الكتاب ومجرع الصحابي وهازم الأحزابي Oh Allah who has sent down the book and who, who, who makes the, the cloud float and O oh Allah who, act, who defeats the army uh, in whom Ya Allah defeat the army Wansurna alayhim and Ya Allah make us um, victorious over them so just one point again it's like about Sadr but the same message that I have been telling in all of this, this chapter please I always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afiyah. Don't ask Allah ta'ala for tests. Don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for difficulty. Don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any sort of calamity. I've seen people who's, who act, have been asking Ya Allah, you know, they, they have said that, you know, give, give me some difficulty so that my sins are removed and my status is raised. Don't show Allah ta'ala your courage. Show Allah ta'ala your weakness. Ya Allah, I'm weak. Ya Allah, I'm weak. Ya Allah, I'm weak. Just always tell Allah Ta'ala that. Tell Allah Ta'ala, I'm extremely weak, Ya Allah. I'm not strong enough to take any sort of difficulty. I beg you that you always keep me in your blessings of this dunya and the hereafter. And Ya Allah, in this very state, in the state of your blessings, Ya Allah, also use me to serve your deen. So that's what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also saying here. Don't... So he's in the battlefield here. So he's... So despite of the fact that he's in the battlefield, he's saying to Sahaba, you know what, it's not a good thing. Don't hope, don't wish for wars. Wars is not a good thing. Whenever there is a war, there's destruction. You know, there's destruction. In fact, the nations get destroyed when there is a war. The infrastructure gets destroyed. The, the people, their small kids might get hurt. They might get killed. Their women might get killed. They might get hurt. You know, it's not a good thing. They're old people, sick people. They all are, are, are infected. Don't hope, don't wish for war. It's not a good thing. All that you should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is afiyat, protection, safety. Just live in a safe, ask Allah ta'ala to keep you in a safe environment all the time. But if there is a point that it, com- that it comes in your life that there is actually a war, then be brave. Then be brave. And be patient. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all of us in His protection, in His in afiyat, in ease. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us also, keep us away from the calamities of sins as well. Sins are also calamity. In fact, sins are the biggest calamity because sins take, us, take people into the fire. Sins take people into the punishment of this dunya, of the grave, of the hereafter. And what, uh, what can be a bigger calamity than that? If people are actually going through the punishments, and to the fire, what can be a bigger calamity? So the biggest calamity is the calamity of sins. So may Allah keep us away from the calamity of, of the dunya and also the calamities of the hereafter and the calamities of the sin. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد مبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد مبارك وسلم 
اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليجها ومولاها اللهم بارك لنا في الموت وفيما بعد الموت اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأمات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا أرحم الراحمين يا أكرم الأكرمين يا كريم يا غفار يا رحيم يا ودود يا وهاب يا ستار يا ستار يا ستار يا هنان يا منان يا الله يا الله please accept this gathering from all of us and all of these people who have come يا الله please accept their coming يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله please accept it يا الله because of the sincerity that these people have come, come with يا الله Ya Arham Ar-Rahimeen, Ya Akram Al-Akramin, Ya Allah, you yourself have said, Ya Iyuhan Nas, Antum Al-Fuqara'u ila Allah, that all oh, people, you are beggars in front of Allah. Ya Allah, this group of beggars is here begging you of your mercy, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please shower your mercy upon all of us. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please grant all of us your love. Ya Allah, fill our hearts with your love. Ya Allah, fill our hearts with your fear as well. Ya Allah, fill our hearts with the love of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, fill our hearts with the love of the people that you love. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please accept all of us to serve your deen. Ya Allah, we definitely are not qabil to serve your deen. Ya Allah, but we also know that it's not about qabiliyat. It's all about qabuliyat, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please accept all of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, Ya Rahman Rahmeen, all the people who've asked for du'as, you know their needs more than we do. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please grant their need, grant them their needs, Ya Allah. From your infinite prayers with khair, with afiyat, with wus'at, with barakat, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahmeen, Ya Allah, people are in any sort of calamity, please remove those calamities from them. Ya Allah, save us from all calamities, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, we beg you that you grant us all the goods of this dunya and all the goods of the hereafter with khair, with afiyat, with wasat, with barakat, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, send us bab for those, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Rahimi, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. Ya Allah, blessings of our health, our eyes, our nose, our ears, our breath, our heartbeats, Air, sun, Ya Allah, this peace, this protection, Ya Allah, this roof, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, we can continue counting and we'll never be able to count. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please increase us in our blessings. And Ya Allah, allow us to use these blessings, Ya Allah, to serve your deen. Ya Allah, save our iman. Ya Allah, save iman of our children, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, save iman of of every single person who's going to come until the day of judgment from our generations. Ya Allah, save us, Ya Allah, from all calamities. Ya Allah, save, Ya Allah, our children from all calamities, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, please be happy with us at every single moment of our lives. Ya Allah, especially at the time of our death. And Ya Allah, you allow us to, Ya Allah, recite kalima as our last words. Ya Allah, save us from the punishment, save us from the punishment of the grave. Ya Allah, please make the questions of graves easy for us. Fill it with light, Ya Allah, make it spacious, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, on the day of judgment, please, Ya Allah, give our books in our right hands. Please, Ya Allah, give us the shade of your throne when there will be no other shade. 
Ya Allah, give us the water from the blessed hands of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, grant all of us his intercession. And Ya Allah, allow us to enter into paradise without reckoning, without questioning. And Ya Allah, give us a space in the blessed feet of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, all what we have asked and what we, what we could not ask. Ya Allah, we beg you that you please grant us all the khair of this dunya and all the khair of the hereafter. Ya Allah, please protect this center, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect this center from all shurus, all fitnas, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect all of us from all shurus, all fitnas, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, please keep all of us in your protection, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Atab alayna innaka anta tababur rahim. Wa sallallahumma ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi. سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا رحمة الرحيم